Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do an oil pastel painting and we're gonna paint these lemons. And I have a time lapse for you here, but if you'd like a real time version of this tutorial, you can find it in Critique Club. I will link that down below. There are over 60 tutorials, real time, long, more advanced tutorials in Critique Club, if that's your jam. And uh, we go over a variety of media, plus you can upload your own work to have a critique from me. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, please check out Critique Club, it's $5 a month and I'd love to have you as a member. We're starting off by sketching on this sanded paper using a purple color pencil. Now I'm using the sanded paper because I know I'll be able to get a lot of layers of oil pastel down. It's kind of a nice paper to use for this. Uh, the brand I'm using is UART, but any textured paper you want to use for this will be just fine. The sanded paper is just a personal favorite of mine. Um, there's also pastel matte, which is I think a little bit better quality and probably a little bit more archival, although the UART sanded paper says it's archival. So, um, you know, use whatever you like. I even use watercolor paper from time to time. And if you're using a paper like watercolor paper, you can always do a wash of watercolor underneath and then add your oil pastels on top of that and just to easily build up saturation. Now I am using a reference photo I found on Unsplash, but there were a couple other lemons I wanted to add. And I also wanted a couple different vantage points. So I went to my fridge and I sliced up some of my own lemons and decided to use those also for my reference. So keep Keep that in mind whenever you're using a reference photo, um, you can always take several photos, use several photos, or even if you're doing a still life, set some of your own elements up as well to get cues on lighting or to be able to see details a little bit better. Now I am, um, I've cut the lemon in a couple different ways just so I'd have a few different options. I wanted to add a um, another piece of lemon here sliced the opposite way, kind of sliced so I just see two sections and uh, kind of a line down the middle. And that's what I'm putting in there. So if, um, if you find the reference photo on Unsplash and you see that there's actually a couple other elements in here or a couple of the elements are different, that's why. And I think it's fun to really make the reference images your own by um, mixing stuff up a little bit. So you don't just have the exact same picture that a bunch of other people have done from the same reference photo. Um, you see that sometimes with some of the more popular image sites. Now the pastels I'm using, I am using the standard set of 50 from Paul Rubens. I'm also using the pastel set of 36 from Paul Rubens that I think is sold out. I'm gonna try to find find um, all these supplies and link them down below in the video description, but I do think the pastel set may be the pastel tones and macaroon tones might be sold out. And I'm also using a set of 24 of the Sennelier oil pastels, which to be honest, the Sennelier's are my favorite, but they're very expensive. So for um, that little set of 24, I think it was about almost $50 versus the set of 50, which is $24 of the Paul Rubens. Um, but I encourage you, if you have oil pastels already, use what you have and see how those do. The Crayola oil pastel pastels are actually pretty good. So are um, the Craypop. So if you have one of those brands, dig them out, play with them, and um, you can get the feel that way. Especially when you're learning, I wouldn't worry too much about light fastness. Now the Paul Rubens and the Sennelier pastels all have light fast information, so you can be fairly uh, assured by going by that and, and seeing what they offer. But um, I know, like, I think the more expensive line of Crepas has life ass information too. So if that's important to you, you can definitely find sets that offer that. But if you're just learning and you want to play, there's no reason you can't use um, cheaper brands that don't offer that information and still get a really nice effect. In fact, I've even used the inexpensive Pentel pastels and had some really good results. So um, it just depends on what your criteria are and what you need. Now I began by blocking in a variety of purples and blues and uh, really, really pale, pale lavenders and blues in the background. And I'm just smudging them with my finger. You can wear gloves for this if it bothers you to get your fingers dirty. What I found is having a rag handy and just a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. I spray the rubbing alcohol onto the rag and I can wipe my fingers off really easily and uh, move to another color. You do want to wipe your hands off before you go to like yellow or something like that. I like to have that um, painterly look, but if you want a smoother look, just add more layers of pastel and blend them more until you've achieved the layer of softness that you want. And it's going to be different for everybody. I like to have a little bit of texture and um, I like to see that kind of visual brush stroke type 
look, but um, everybody's different. Now for the tabletop, we have some shadow and light, and on this first layer, I'm just kind of blocking in the basic values and colors, and I want the tabletop to kind of meld into the, um, the background because we've got kind of a shallow depth of field, and so it, the, the field is so shallow when I'm looking at the reference photo that the wedge of lemon that's in front is fuzzy and even that lemon in back is fuzzy but I wanted to have the lemons all in focus and just have that kind of back of the table edge fuzzy. Now when I want to add more color strongly on top of a, a fairly thick layer of pastel I'll go in with a Sennelier. So I can do like several layers of the Paul Rubens um, and those are fairly soft but the Sennelier are even softer and I can go on top of that. I'd love to have a full set of Sennelier someday um, but Honestly, I don't use my oil pastels enough to justify splashing out that much money on a full set of Sennelier. But if um, if I was going to uh, start doing a lot of oil pastels and exhibit my work in galleries and sell those finished paintings, I definitely would um, would invest in the Sennelier just to have that extra assurance of the light fastness. And I trust the Paul Rubens light fastness, um, but even some of those pastel tones, I'm sure, are not going to be the highest rated. And I mean, I think they're pretty honestly rated. They're not all going to be light fast colors. And you can say that actually for any brand of any supplies. They uh, Almost all um, brands of professional supplies will offer fugitive colors because artists demand them. Some artists would rather have those vibrant colors because they're going to, um, they're going to make greeting cards, they're going to make calendars, they're going to do other things with their artwork and they'd rather have that super, super vibrant color even though it would fade if displayed on the wall for a long period of time. They still sell alizarin crimson paint because some artists still want it even though it is a very fugitive color. So I don't want you to think that if you go and buy you know, really expensive artist green materials, they're definitely going to be light fast. It varies color to color and every pigment is different. So you really want to look at that tube, at that stick of pigment and make sure that what you're, uh, that what you're buying is what is going to do the job that you need it to do. Now for the yellow here, I'm using a variety of really pale yellows. I'm using some brighter, creamier, uh, warmer yellows. I'm also layering over some like sap greens and some lavenders. And I'm doing that to get some kind of natural light and shading. I'm even using some of this kind of like almost a uh, corally orangey red because I'm seeing some bounce back of light that's giving us that red color. I think it's probably a bounce back from the warm tones of the table, uh, table wood underneath. So, you know, try to get those subtle colors. I know I try to, I, I try and I, I tend to exaggerate the little, little undertones I see because I think that is something we can do in a painting to make it a little bit more exciting and to make it more, um, to make it more interesting for a viewer where you just see like a bunch of lemons, it might not be that exciting, but if you can pick out these little undertones of coral or green or purple, and you can add those reflections in there and those little bursts of colors, it just kind of um, it elevates it a bit and it makes people see ordinary objects can be beautiful. And I think that's what we do as artists is we, we show the muggles um, the beauty in everyday ordinary objects. And anybody can anybody can learn this skill. Anybody can um, can learn to be creative and to learn to paint. So when I say muggles, I don't mean that like oh, the people that can't learn. There are no people that can't learn. If you have the interest, you totally can. Now, when I need to again, when I need to stick more color down, and I've added a lot of um, of the Paul Rubens pastels, then I go in with the Sennelier. The other thing that I really like about this method is that I'm able to do a bulk of the work with a less expensive product that still performs, and then I can save my precious <laughs> Sennelier's for those final levels where I really need them. And the same thing with soft pastels too. I have a bunch of um, different brands of soft pastels. They're light fast, they're fine, but then I've got some of my favorite super duper soft pastels. They would be the Sennelier's and the Schminkas, and I use those on the top layers because they will stick on top of virtually anything, but they're also very expensive, so I kind of want to save them for those final layers where, they're, where I really need them, um, rather than clog the tooth of the paper with those super soft uh, materials and then not be able to layer on top. Now this slice of lemon here that's being, that's kind of like propped up on its edge, we have a lot of light shining through that and it almost glows. But it's not going to glow if I just put white there and leave it be. I need to have some contrast. So as I'm working on the rind of that, um, that center lem lemon, I'm going to be adjusting that several times. I'm going to have to darken it. Even though the rind is white, it's opaque. So when it's up on its edge and the light is coming in from behind, that rind, even though we know it's white, our brain tells us, hey, Lindsay, that rind is white. Why are you making it gray? Because the light is blocked, that white is actually going to look gray versus the white on the 
uh, the rind on the lemon on the um, on the left there that's that's facing up that's getting some of that light bounced off of it and reflected off of it and it's going to show as a white rind so it's it can be kind of um, confusing your brain's going to tell you that's white but you got to trust your eyes and what your eyes tell you um, you're in the shadow there and that's going to be darker and you need to have that contrast in order to make the slice of that lemon appear almost like a stained glass, you know, appear glowing. Now the pencils I'm using here are Prismacolors and um, Prismacolors are a wonderful pencil for mixed media because they are very soft. They stick on top of a lot of things. I can use them with my oil pastels. They will, um, even if they scrape away some of the pastel, they'll leave some pigment behind. They're just a very good mixed media product. They're also a little bit more on the opaque side versus other pencils. So if I'm doing a watercolor and I want to beef up an area or give an area a little bit more body or volume or weight, I can go in with those Prismacolors and they will let some of the watercolor show through, but they will also beef up that area of my painting. And honestly, that's how I use my Prismacolors. I tend not to use Prismacolors just on their own as their own thing. Um, I use them to enhance. I don't, I, I honestly don't really trust Prismacolors to be like a one and done medium because they're not the most light fast. I feel though if I mix them on top of a watercolor, I'm using them on light fast products and um, I'm not using them as the basis of everything. So even if they fade out, there's enough pigment behind them to carry the picture. Um, anyway, that's, that's my philosophy. You can do what you want to do. Um, my favorite pencils are the Derwent Light Fast. They're also more expensive. They're actually on sale at Blick right now for like two bucks a pop. So I'll put up, I'll just put a link in for those in case you're curious about them because they are having a big Derwent sale right now. And I hate to see people miss out on that because they are, you know, when you can get Derwent Light Fast pencils for Prismacolor prices, it's a good day. It's a good day, my friends. I don't want you to miss out on that. Um, I'm going to grab a couple open stock um, ink tense pan paints too that I'm running low on. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I like to go in with a soft color pencil like the Derwent Lightfast or like the Prismacolor Premier just to go in and um, add detail, especially if it's, a, if it's a, a tiny area. That way I don't have to sand down my oil pastels. I mean, you could, you know, sharpen your oil pastels on a sanding block, waste all that pigment and get a finer point, but it's not going to keep it. It's not going to last. You're much better off just go in with that, with that color pencil, refine that edge, add that detail. It's going to be loads easier. You're going to save your medium and uh, you're going to save your media and all your supplies are going to last longer. So that's a case. That's, that's why I love mixed media because you can use the right tool for the job. You can use the media that's going to give you the best result. Now, of course, it's not a pure oil pastel painting. I don't know if anybody cares about oil pastel purity or pastel purity or color pencil purity. I know some people do. Um, it's mostly important if you're going to be exhibiting and like a competition that is purely watercolor or purely colored pencil. I don't do that. If you want to do that, by all means, be aware of what you're using and what you're mixing and probably don't mix, but uh, mix your media. But I think that you're really just shutting yourself off to a beautiful world of possibilities when you um, don't do mixed media. I mean, just think if you have limited supplies, if you have one set of colored pencils and you have one set of oil pastels and you have one set of watercolors, on their own, you may be quite limited. Maybe you don't have exactly the color you want. Maybe the, um, the warm red that you have is a little too opaque. Maybe it's too transparent. Maybe, you know, it just isn't getting the job done for you. But if you take that set of 24 colored pencils you have, well, all of a sudden you have multiplied the versatility of that watercolor set. You've multiplied the versatility of that set of, you know, 50 Pentel oil pastels by being able to go in with another media. I mean, you can really make the most of not very many supplies when you're willing to do mixed media and it makes them last longer because you're not fighting with something and painting it and wiping it out and trying to redo it with one media that maybe isn't the best for that specific topic. I also like that when you use mixed media that you can um, quickly uh, nudge or enhance um, or sweeten up a painting without having to do a ton of reconstruction work. So let's say you're doing a gouache painting and it's looking pretty good, but you just don't have the shading right on, say you've painted a bunch of oranges and you don't have the shading right on one of the oranges. Well, you could remix that paint and you can go in, you can putter around and you can end up dissolving the previous layers and then you end up with a bald spot on your painting, but you could take a colored pencil or you could take an oil pastel or you could take a soft pastel and go in and just add a little swipe of color, smudge it, and you're good to go without bothering the layer underneath because you're using a dry media over a media that would be reconstituted if you went in it with a with a wet brush again. So it 
just really multiplies everything you can do. And it really makes the most over what you have if you're just willing to mix your media. Now, another thing I, I think is a nice tip to share is using a, an opposite color or a complementary color to add life to your painting. So I was just going in there with a purple, like a magenta purple colored pencil and adding my darker shadows, adding details. Um, and what it does is it will, if it mixes with the yellow, it's gonna make a neutral, neutral tone, it's going to neutralize. But if it lays down next to the yellow, it's going to make that color vibrate because those colors are opposite on the color wheel. If you mix them together, they neutralize and they make a gray or a brown. But if they're adjacent to one another, they make each other appear more vibrant. They, um, uh, something with the way the light scatters, it just makes it up here more vibrant. So that's another tip I would say. If your colors are looking bland, we have so much yellow in this, um, this still life, grab a purple, grab an opposite color. If you're doing um, if you're doing red apples, maybe grab a green pencil and add a, just a little outline here and there. Just add a little mark that can make that red more vibrant. If you're doing blueberries, maybe grab an orange pencil and give a little spark of orange here and there. It's going to make the blueberries more vibrant. Um, if you need a natural shadow and, you know, gray looks dead, grab some purple, mix it with the yellow, get a natural shadow. You might need to shift it to a little more magenta so it doesn't look brown or a little bit more blue so it doesn't look brown, depending on the yellow you're starting with. But, um, it can really perk up a dull painting. Now, the little tool you've seen me use here and there is a silicone tipped tool, and you can get them from the art supply store. You, they're kind of expensive if you get them at the art supply store, unless you get them in like the stamping department, they're a little bit cheaper. You can also find them on Amazon, sold as nail um, art tools, and I'll link some of those down below on Amazon because they're much cheaper. Um, but they're basically just little silicone or rubber tipped tools that, um, they are great for blending because you can get the detail you want. They're very similar in texture to like if you were to blend with your fingers, but you have more control. So, you know, you're working with these big pastel sticks, but you want to, you know, nudge that color into the spot where you need it. Those little silicone tools are perfect for that. Um, I love how you get an impressionistic look with oil pastels. The more I use them, the more I really like them. Um, and even some of the cheaper ones can work really well. But if you're using oil pastels, maybe they came in a kit or maybe they were your kids and you notice they're very transparent and they kind of gum up when you're coloring with them. In that case, I would say get rid of those. Those are going to give me nothing but heartache. But for a couple more dollars, you could get the um, the Paul Rubens. You could get, well, the, you could get the Mungio Gallery. They're about the same price as Paul Rubens. You could get Craypaws, any of the Craypaws line. You could get Crayola. They're actually quite good. Um, and you're only spending a couple more dollars. I would say if you're, if you're worried about longevity, go for like the, um, go for some that has a light fast rating and pigment information like the Paul Rubens. Um, you know, they're way cheaper than Sennelier. They're like half the price, half the price or or la actually, no, they're like a quarter of the price of Sennelier per stick. Um, but if you're not worried about light fastness, if you just want to learn and play, try Crayola, try Pentel, um, you know, try Craypaws, try some of the, like the lesser expensive Craypaws. They will definitely give you the feel for it. You can decide whether you like it or not um, before investing a lot more money. Uh, they may fade, sure, but if you're just kind of trying to figure out whether you like it or not, I think that's a good um, that's a good way to go. Now, as my final highlights, I'll use a Sennelier White Pastel because it's softer and it will stick on top of everything. Can you see how that bright white is just really grabbing on there? Um, I do find the Paul Rubens White does a really good job too. It's just a teeny bit firmer. In fact, I bought a set of six um, of the Paul Rubens White Pastels just to have them to use with my other pastels because I know the whites just go so much quicker. And um, and I can then save that that precious white Sennelier stick for those super fine final highlights. But there, I grabbed a Paul Rubens one. You can see it, it stuck pretty well. And here I'm still fighting with that shadow on the rind, getting it just right. Um, the, and it goes kind of like light to dark. There is some bounced light on that, so I've got to get the shadow areas gray, but I've got to get the, I got to have some of the areas remain lighter. It's kind of a balancing act. Um, and you do tend to tend to go back and forth a little bit. And, um, for graying up, I find the Prismacolor pencils work really well for that just to, you know, nudge that color a little bit. Um, it's, it's great. It's, it's great fun. I fully enjoyed working on this artwork. Um, and if you check out the tutorial in Critique Club, I hope you grab your supplies out and you play along because it's definitely a doable project. I don't feel like there's anything too difficult to draw. I did snap a photo of my drawing in case you wanted to trace it or draw from the drawing, but, um, it's really, um, it's really not a bad, um, 
a bad subject to start if you are beginning in color pencil. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please check out the Critique Club link down below. And also I'm running a special on my full-time, my uh, long classes, 40% off with the coupon code FUN40. I'll put that in the video description as well. And if there's been a class you've been thinking about picking up, you can save some money on that. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.